Humans have evolved in such a way that we now have no natural predators in the way a gazelle has a lion. Except for other humans, that is. For this reason, humans hunting other humans for sport is an idea that the media has explored for a long time. From the Criminal Minds episode, Open Season, to the 2019 movie, Ready or Not, the subject has provided us with a thrilling, albeit twisted and morbid, form of entertainment. I mean, we all have at least one person we wouldn't mind hunting down, right? But out there somewhere, there was once a serial killer who took his morbid fantasies and made them a reality. A living nightmare for 17 young women who would never wake up. We should warn you, this episode is extremely disturbing. Robert Hansen was an American serial killer who was active in Anchorage, Alaska between 1971 and 1983. During his killing spree, Hansen claimed 17 victims, although some believe his death toll was actually much higher. Dubbed the Butcher Baker, he went on a rage-fueled killing spree, taking the lives of young women from the ages of 17 to 19. But later he would begin killing older women involved in the sex industry. He would capture his victims, pretending to solicit their services, hold them hostage for days, during which he would sexually assault and torture them. For the next stage of his horrifying game, Robert would then fly his victims out into the Alaskan wilderness and hunt them down like wild game. Once he had stalked his victims, he would either shoot or stab them. Those who were eventually found were located in shallow graves somewhere along the Kanik River. However, many of his victims would never be recovered. What stopped him? Let's find out. Hi, welcome to the mysterious and creepy. A native of Iowa, Hansen led a fairly uneventful childhood. He was shy, often described as a loner, and he had a difficult time making friends. His father, a baker, had a very domineering personality, and the two argued frequently, usually with Robert on the losing end. Robert had several physical aspects that he thought held him back. He suffered from severe acne during his teenage years. This in turn left him scarred even into adulthood. Another issue was that he had a stutter. This made him unpopular with the girls at school. A deep-seated hatred for women would begin festering within him now. His only refuge growing up seemed to be his fascination with hunting and archery. In 1957, he enlisted in the Army Reserves for a short year, after which he was discharged. He went on to become a drill instructor at the police academy where he met his first wife. They married in the summer of 1960. By December 1960, Hansen was arrested for burning down the school bus garage in an act of revenge for his unpopularity in high school. He served 20 months of a three-year prison sentence. During his incarceration, he was diagnosed with manic depression with periodic schizophrenic episodes. The psychiatrist who made the diagnosis noted that Hansen had an infantile personality and was obsessed with getting back at people he felt had wronged him. Hansen's wife filed for divorce while he was incarcerated, which further inflamed his hatred towards women. In the following years, Hansen ran up a pretty long rap sheet for himself, mostly for petty theft. However, amongst all the crime and mental health issues, by 1967, he had managed to move to Anchorage, Alaska with his second wife and their two children. He appeared to settle into normal life in Alaska and was well liked by his neighbors. He even set several local hunting records. In 1971, Hansen was arrested twice, first for abducting and attempting to rape an unidentified housewife, second for raping an unidentified sex worker. He pled no contest to the offense involving the housewife. The rape charge involving the sex worker was dropped as part of a plea bargain. After serving six months of this sentence, he was placed on a work release program and released to a halfway house. In 1976, he was caught stealing a chainsaw. For this, he was sentenced to five years in prison and required to receive psychiatric treatment for his bipolar disorder. The Alaska Supreme Court decided to reduce his sentence, and he was released with time served. Despite this obvious downward spiral, the legal system allowed Hansen to slip through their fingers, not knowing the hell and torment he would bring his future victims. 
On June 13, 1983, after years of killing and perfecting his capture, torture, hunt, kill process, Hansen would meet the young woman who would be his downfall, Cindy Paulson. Cindy was 17 at the time and worked as a prostitute. Hansen offered her $200 for her services, but when she got into his car, he pulled a gun and drove her back to his home where he assaulted her. He would hold her there, chained by the neck. He told young Cindy he would eventually fly them both out to his cabin at the Kinnick River, also admitting to her that he'd previously taken seven other girls out there, but assured her that she would be back by the following afternoon. Cindy knew she was never coming back if he took her to the cabin, so she waited, waited for her moment to escape. It wasn't until they reached the airfield that she seized her moment. While Hansen was loading his private plane, Cindy escaped from the back of his vehicle and ran to the nearest highway where a truck driver stopped and picked her up. Clearly traumatized by the situation, Cindy convinced the truck driver to drop her off at a nearby hotel where she had been previously staying. After dropping her off, the truck driver called the police to report the incident. Investigators found Paulson in her hotel room, disheveled and still handcuffed. Down at the station, Cindy told police everything that had happened. She even noted that she'd left her shoes on the passenger floorboard of his car to prove that she'd been there. Police questioned Hansen, but he denied the accusations and investigators unbelievably wrote him off for his mild family man demeanor. However, Detective Glenn Floth with the Alaska State Troopers had been investigating a disturbing and baffling case. Bodies had been turning up around Anchorage, and he believed it to be the work of a serial killer. Floth contacted the FBI and had them draw up a criminal profile of the perpetrator. Special Agent John Douglas, who delivered the profile, thought the killer would be an experienced hunter with low self-esteem, have a history of being rejected by women and would feel compelled to keep souvenirs of his murders, such as a victim's jewelry. He also suggested that the assailant might stutter. Using this profile, Floth investigated possible suspects, narrowing it down until he reached Hansen, who fit the profile perfectly and, of course, also owned a plane. Floth obtained a warrant to search Hansen's homes, vehicles, and plane. During their search, police discovered jewelry belonging to some of the missing women. They also found hidden behind Hansen's headboard an aeronautical chart with 37 X marks on it. Many of these marks matched sites where bodies had been previously found. The remaining X's would then lead police to identify further victims. Hansen was sentenced to 461 years in prison without the possibility of parole. He died of natural causes in 2014 at the age of 75. After her ordeal with Hansen, Cindy Paulson had disappeared. She reportedly had gone back to sex work at one point, but is currently alive and well. In 2013, a movie called The Frozen Ground was released, starring Vanessa Hudgens as Cindy Paulson and Nicolas Cage as FBI agent Glenn Floth. It focused on Cindy's part in helping bring the butcher baker, Robert Hansen, to justice. Interestingly, Paulson was interviewed for the movie and spoke to director Scott Walker and Hudgens to tell her story. Scott Walker received a letter from Cindy afterwards stating that she felt, quote, a weight had been lifted off her shoulders, unquote. Although her current whereabouts are unknown, we hope Cindy is doing well with her family and living the life she deserves. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.